you're in pre-production on a film, uh, the bit before you actually make it, you generate loads of documents. Now these documents are vital because they communicate a shared vision for the movie. The screenplay is important, of course, because it's your story, but the actual document itself is really just a blueprint for the film that you're going to make. The public aren't going to read it and talk about your writing. They're going to see a film that was created with that screenplay as the initial planning. And of course, making your film means getting lots of other people involved as well. Obviously the cast and the producer, but also the production designer, the cinematographer, the costumer, and so on and so forth. And to talk to them to help communicate your vision, you have a great tool available to you, the mood board. Now, mood boards come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, you'll sometimes see them as pitching documents, like in music videos and that kind of industry, uh, or in longer formats for pitching TV shows and movies, often called like a show bible in that context. Those documents tend to be about setting a tone and giving the investors an idea of what you want to do. But in pre-production proper, mood boards tend to do a couple of different jobs. Now on a smaller film, like the ones that you're probably talking about if you're looking at YouTube videos, you might want to use them to tell the story of your film. You'll pick shots that look like the frames and the blocking for the scenes that you want to make. That's sort of like using them in place of a storyboard, which is the reason why you don't tend to see it on bigger productions where there'll be an actual storyboard artist. And in that context, of course, you have a little bit more control about what it looks like. Most importantly, you can use them to identify a visual language for the movie. And it can be used by your DOP to know what equipment they'll need, what kind of lighting you want, and the framing choices that you're interested in. To me, that's the thing that's by far the most useful thing about a mood board, um, because it helps if you don't know technical terms around cinematography or design. By picking these references and putting them in your mood board, you can show your heads of department uh, and they'll understand from those references what sort of options you want, even if you don't know the words for them or the technological lingo that's needed. So to make your mood boards, of course, you'll need to get loads of stills from movies and TV shows and music videos or advertising if that's what your mood board is for. There are a few services that do this. Uh, I personally use Shot Deck, which was developed by or in collaboration with, can't quite remember, a guy called Lawrence Scher who shot the film Joker. Shot Deck has a few really interesting functions that are very useful for doing more specific references and we'll get to talk about those in a second. This stuff can all be a bit abstract, so let's dive into a real world example, which is the mood boards for my new film, Personal Effects. This is a short film, so the mood boards are pretty small. Personal Effects takes place over two main settings. There's essentially a long conversation in a bar and then an extended flashback on a beach, a kind of seaside town. So I did one mood board page for each and then an additional page with a few more references for general tone. In the age of digital production, mood boards don't have to be just images. Uh, they can include things like text prompts to establish a mood or through the wonder of like embedding media in a PDF. Uh, it can be music or even links to other videos. Plenty of directors actually, um, from what I can tell, make playlists for their crew to listen to when developing ideas, which can really help, again, if you're not great at communicating purely through text. So this first page immediately communicates a few clear things about the scene. We're looking at beaches and not a general beachy area, but specifically a beach around a seaside town. The sea is present in all but one shot and the characters in the foreground at the bottom right are framed against it, which is something that I want to do throughout this sequence. All of the shots are also quite desaturated, which means less colourful, and they're also quite low contrast. There are sort of these milky greys throughout the images instead of deep shadows and bright highlights like you might see from more of a kind of video look. All of these things together immediately communicate a visual style to my cinematographer on this project, Samira Oberberg. And it's worth remembering that mood boards are just part of that discussion. Early on in our planning, uh, we were looking through these references together and she pointed out that all of the references uh, were drawn from movies that were shot on film. But that wasn't something that we could financially do, so we decided against shooting film on our shorts. You don't have to take everything from a reference and it can sometimes pay to be careful about what references you do use just in case someone gets the wrong idea. Idea. You can always point it out, you can always put a bit of text there that says, I mean this specific thing about this reference. Now on this page we're looking at possibilities for the bar scene. The top two shots are actually cropped from the same still, uh, it just looks cooler like this, hashtag graphic design. Graphic design is my passion. But seriously, engaging interest is important, especially if these are for investors. Again, from these stills, Samira can work out a few things straight away. I'm interested in using practical lights, like the lights on the bar or behind the two women. I'm looking for a high contrast, saturated look in direct contrast to the beach sequences. And the shots are also framed tighter, even where I've had to cut one wide shot into two mids to make tighter shots. 
And the depth of field is very shallow. That means typically a long lens and an open aperture. You can tell the depth of field because the background is blurry and there are these shapes, bokeh, behind the two women. That's when things are out of focus. Now, a mood board is not a holy text. Shortly after we started pre-production, we realized we couldn't afford to shoot this scene at night. Uh, bars are expensive to close if it means that they're losing their business. So quickly, we transitioned into thinking of this scene as a daytime scene. But despite that, the general rules that we worked out from these references remain about the same. Shallow depth of field, high contrast lighting, that sort of thing. And we scouted a location with dark walls to help it feel shadowy. More on location scouting in another video, by the way. Drawing together these assets can be done through Google, but it's much easier with a service like ShotDeck. The best thing about the platform is its metadata. Each shot comes with a range of information like the size of the frame, close up or wide, the color palettes, warm, cold, saturated, desaturated, and the number of people in the frame even. That was useful in finding shots without people in or with just two people for the beach images. And all of that metadata is also useful in finding these saturated bar shots. So the more you can control these variables, the more accurate your mood board will be to your vision and the easier it is to communicate to your professional crew. If you can't find exactly what you're looking for, just explain it. It doesn't matter so much that this close-up uh, down here of Evangeline Lilly is from a superhero comedy, which is quite inappropriate for this drama about grief. Uh, I can just flag that to Samira when discussing it, and that's if your crew notice at all, which quite often they won't. Not everyone has like an encyclopedic knowledge of film. This final page is all about mood and actually links to a video. Remember that I said that you don't just have to stick with pictures? Well, here's some evidence. What I want you to do now is take 20 seconds uh, as part of this video and listen to the mood reel that I created for this. This edited reel gives a sense of the rhythm and sound design that I would like to try in the film. And I think that's something that's valuable for everyone on the crew to know, even if they're not directly related to sound, you know, if that's not exactly their work. It's actually my first time doing a reel like this, and I think I'm gonna do them for all of my new projects because I found that to be invaluable in terms of communicating some kind of ephemeral sense of what the final movie's gonna be like. Now there is another major use for mood boards and it's a little bit different. This is when it comes to talking about art direction, production design and costuming. But before we talk about that, if you've enjoyed watching the video and want to know more about how to make indie films or about this particular project, then please go ahead and click subscribe and turn on notifications to see new videos when they come out. You can also contribute to my coffee, Ko-Fi, uh, linked below. Making indie movies basically isn't cheap and any support is greatly appreciated. Okay, so money over, let's talk movies again. Your production designer, costume designer, hair and makeup artists also need guidance on your vision for your film. And if, like me, you know, you rarely wear makeup and usually dress just in whatever's least creased, then this might be a challenge. Certainly I find describing what I'm looking for in terms of that much more difficult than I do cinematography. But fear not, mood boards, yet again, are really the answer to this. The end result looks something like this, which uh, covers the apartment looks for the main character's flat in personal effects. Now, take a look at that and compare it to this, which is the final location. Do you notice the similarities? There's these rough wood textures, large windows, and this kind of boho chic vibe to the whole place. You'll notice that some of these images are low quality or from a mix of sources like fashion photography as well as family photographs and screenshots from a YouTuber's videos or something. For me, this is less of a worry than with the cinematography focused mood board because the actual visuals themselves matter less here than the ideas, meanings, trends behind what you're trying to communicate. 
So that's mood boards, which, like I said, I think are a fantastically valuable pre-planning tool for any filmmaker. And that's across not only narrative film, but commercials, of course, and music videos. If you're a director who's coming from a background of like loving telling stories uh, or working in theatre, but not necessarily familiar with the language of cinematography or with what you might particularly want in terms of production design, then a mood board is invaluable and will really help making your film a smoother experience for everyone involved. And of course, they don't have to be the final thing. Uh, something that I've realized on this project, more so than my previous ones, is that as much as I redraft the screenplay a lot, I can also redraft those mood boards. So here's an example of a follow-up mood board that I made for Samira about more specific cinematographic references God, cinematographic? So here's a follow-up mood board that I made for Samira after we'd done some location scouting and after she'd seen some of the places we were gonna be in. And we could really start to drill down into specific references for the look and feel of the visuals in the movie. You might notice that these are more specific in terms of being about framing, that they match a bit more of what I actually wanted to have on screen as opposed to just ideas about how to do it. And there's also things there that we started to discuss like about the actual execution of the cinematography, talking about textured light or side light here, for instance, that's to do with the actual equipment that will be needed and where those lights will be placed in the room. That's it from me. Bye for now.